a few years back, I was on a cave trip to this pool here with uh, Sinea Rogers. Uh, her husband, uh, Chris, and her son, Tim, waited outside. We'd already caved uh, a few trips before we got here. Uh, Adam uh, Germanrude was also on this trip. And we found ourselves looking at that pool and just filled with these plus pots. So I knew one day I was going to return. So a few years later, uh, Adam was busy with another project, but uh, Chase, Tim, and Paul both came along and uh, we started down back in the Big Bat. It always starts with going down that uh, culvert is one of the entrances in. And then you climb down through this room and after that it just gets kind of small. I have to, again, uh, drop Chase, Tim, and Paul's name because I couldn't have got this done without them helping me carry the gear that uh, this dumb idea required. I thought it was clever you put it on your foot. It was real clever not having to take it off. <laughs> this is just a, a little pool that's probably a foot and a half tall, but I walk by it all the time and I just wanted to save it. It's just kind of cool. So this is the pool. And you can see that's filled with some sort of algae or uh, biological growth of some sort. Uh, so it's obviously coming in from the outside, bringing stuff in. There's a salamander that's found the pool. And I believe, I've come and checked on the pool a few times and there's always something hunting the plesopods. And this time there were none in there. Absolutely no bugs. So this is me, I built a little light table that's cave ready to uh, film these on. I have no idea how you film plesopods. This is first day of class. And so I built this little system that you can uh, hopefully film and capture these things. Uh, I don't know anything about how to do a scale at the time. I wasn't thinking all this through, I just wanted to capture these and on film I uh, just for uh, uh, some sort of idea of a scale uh, I can barely see them with glasses on so they are you know the motion is what shows them best there's no way I'm gonna film them moving around in a pool of water I would say they're probably the length of three pencil leads thicknesses Maybe four for the big ones. Anyway, uh, there were no plesopods in that pool. They'd been hunted out. So I decided to crawl back in further to the next pool. And you can see there it's Petri dish cam. And uh, uh, there's the next pool. And here I am, uh, plesopod hunting. Fortunately for me, they're not very quick. So here's the light table set up. I didn't record Petri dish cam to come back. And you can see me putting the uh, Petri dish on the uh, light table and kind of that's my system for setting everything up. So here's my first attempt. I'm playing, you know, I've never lit these bugs before. So I'm trying to get the lighting and the the camera to play well with the bugs. Uh, there we go, one's moving. Uh, the other one, the intestines look full, so that's an interesting, interesting uh, thing to look at. So here's me, I'm my own cameraman, so I've set up a separate camera. I'm gonna watch this and film myself, uh, you know, getting this done. Hero shot, I guess. And naturally, it all fell in on the first try, knocked everything over. Yeah. Uh, so I had to recapture the 
plus pods out of the other pool. I saved them first and then started putting the uh, project back together again. I keep hearing you learn from your mistakes, but I don't think I learned anything from this. But we'll see how the shot turns out. So here it is with the camera set up again, probably uh, not trusting it to set on a ledge. So, uh, this is the part where we just kind of start actually documenting these bugs. And, and uh, it's, they're really cool. I mean, you, you would think looking at it, you know which end is the head, but it's actually the tail. Uh, uh, you can see the tiny antenna on the other end feeling around. And uh, so it's finding its way around the edge of the jar right now. So I, my assumption is they live in darkness all the time. So they're, they know how to get around. There's something they're feeling. So uh, the waves, I don't know how, you know, I didn't mean to make waves. I've learned as we went along. Uh, but they go through the crud just fine. Are they they uh, are happy setting still. Uh, You know, like I said, this is a, you know, I, I, I got, got something done. Uh, it was a really a cool uh, thing to have captured that. That's all the good shots I wound up getting. It wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. Uh, and then, of course, I'm a lot more cautious uh, uh, on putting up the uh, Petri dish and then start tearing down the camera gear. as you would expect. Like I said, it was really fascinating. I, as I'm on my knees there, but that little passage is a backbreaker. Here's a Petri dish cam again, uh, going back to their home. I couldn't bring myself to release them in that pool I was standing next to uh, with the, with the uh, uh, predator in there. So uh, they're back here. Hopefully uh, there's two, so I'm hoping they're a reproductive pair. I'm hoping maybe that maybe the intestines weren't full on that one. Maybe it's eggs and they're uh, they're planning to reproduce, uh, so, and, and with everything in Big Bad, it's, uh, it can be, uh, tiny, tight, and muddy, So trying to film this as a second person, you know, is a, uh, in, with no room is really was kind of neat. It was also, I probably put in two, two and a half hours in a cave by myself working while my friends were around the corner uh, exploring new things. Yeah, Again, I couldn't have done anything uh, without their help, but there was something about it, no. being in there for two hours with just ass. you and these... Uh, there we uh, go. Bugs. I say just cleaning everything up. Uh, shout out to Dave Black for teaching me the, uh, the, the towel trick. There's the backbreaker. And after two and a half hours, I'm starting to feel it. turn back and said I might just head out here and they said oh it opens up and so I kept with it and yeah but that was rough getting through there and then climbing down with a rope and stuff like that was the most like risky and tight spaces and, yeah you know, there's, a, there's a reason most people don't go that way <laughs> yeah he said it's not too many have done it but so that was Paul on the trip report for where they went as you can tell I I have nothing to complain about uh, on uh, my tight little muddy thing. Again, here's Tim giving me a hand and uh, getting all this stuff put together. 
We just wanted to get into another shot. <laughs> I can say a big thanks to oh the uh, Adam, Sinea, Chase, and Tim, and Paul that they all made this project happen. I just brought the camera and a flashlight. And as anyone that's been to Big Bat knows, this is kind of how the trip ends. If anyone knows more about what I was looking at, please contact me, leave a message, whatever. I'd like to learn more.